Who wants to go to hell today? Better watch it, boy. There's a group called ACDC. And um, they used to sing, of course, they used to sing a lot of songs about the devil and about hell. And one of them was, uh, hell ain't no bad place to be. Okay? The other one, of course, their biggest one was Highway to Hell. And um, their lead singer, Bon Scott, uh, is there now writing new music. Um, only it sounds like wailing and gnashing of teeth. And um, I can't think of anybody that I want to go there. I'm mad at people. Okay, I've got a list of people that I'm mad at, and if you get uppity on me, let me see your list. Well, maybe I don't want to see your list. Maybe I'm on it, all right? But anyway, I got a list of people I'm mad at, okay? I don't want any of the people on that list to die and go to hell. Not, not when I think about it. Last Sunday, we found out what hell is like. Real hell. Some people say, oh, I'm, I'm having hell on earth. Oh, living, living, living life with those people is, is hell on earth. Uh, it may be bad, but it's not hell bad. Okay? And uh, I want you to just keep that in mind this morning. I'm going to preach this message. Uh, I, I had... I actually worked on something different last night, and, and I don't think God would let me do it. Not not now. Um, so I'm just going to just kind of hold that. I actually found a message uh, on PowerPoint that I was going to preach three years ago. And I'm going, I don't think I ever preached that. And I looked at it, and I'm going, well, it might, it might be good, but I'm just going to wait, all right? I'm going to wait on the Lord on that. So anyway, um, let's go to, where can we go? Let's, let's start out with Revelation 14. Go ahead and turn there. And this is kind of where we left off last week. This is teaching, preaching on hell. Now, if you're here today and you're not sure where eternity or what eternity has in store for you, this is your message. It's for you. If you're watching online, if you happen to be scrolling Facebook, I post the sermon as it's live, post a live feed, number one, to Pastor Mike online Facebook page because that's a, a open page. Anybody can get to it. I tweet it. I give people the link. They can watch it. High definition. Then I share that with uh, the people on my friends list. And I encourage people, and if you're watching on Facebook right now, hit your like and share button right now. Because what's going to happen is that's going to show up on your friends list. Anybody that's on your friends list that I'm not is going to see that. They're going to be scrolling through Facebook. My wife, whenever we get in a car to go somewhere, her phone comes out and she's reading Facebook. Okay, That's why we're on there. I had somebody ask me this week, they said, Facebook's evil, it's got evil people on it. What do you want what do you want to be associated with that? I want to be I want the evil people to watch. Okay? Paul didn't have a problem even going to Mars Hill with all the philosophers there and being in their midst and saying, See that thing over there where it says unknown God? Let me tell you who that is. Okay? Paul didn't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with being on Facebook because I want the people on your list to be able to hear, at least scroll by and see this. And if they've got their live thing on their app, it'll just, it'll come up as soon as they scroll up. They'll hear me talking, okay? And, um, but I want whoever's listening, if you're not sure what eternity holds for you, this is your message today. You need to, this is dead serious. This is why we have church to begin with. Amen? It's evangelistic. It's supposed to preach a gospel, can't preach a gospel unless people are scared 
of where they're going to go. And fear is one of the seven spirits of God. The fear of the Lord. And if you're not afraid of God and what He can do to you, you don't have that spirit in you. Okay? you got an arrogant, pompous spirit where you think that you're just so good, naturally, you're going to go all the way to heaven and no stopping for you. But I'm telling you, I still fear God. Amen. I fear His wrath. I fear His chastening. And this is as serious as it gets. Revelation 14, verse 9, The third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, or receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up how long? Forever and ever, people. And they have no rest day or night who worship the beast in his image and whosoever received the mark of his name. Hell and the lake of fire is a place of everlasting, non-stop, eternal, day and night torment. It is never rest. You are never annihilated. You never become unconscious and just lay for endless eternity unconscious and unaware. You will be as aware as those who are in heaven are aware. Those who are in heaven and the new earth and new Jerusalem and new heaven, they are aware of the rest and the bliss and the joy that they have that God gives them not because they were good but because they were saved okay that's the difference we're not talking about people who are better than everybody else and you can't be so naturally you're not going to heaven we're talking about people who are awful rotten nasty dirty people and every one of you I'm looking at you you just you look like you deserve hell some of you look like you've been there already okay but we deserve it. We've got it coming. That's what this message is. Who deserves hell? Now I'm not going to pull any punches. I'm not going to be nice about it. Okay? So, you can try to keep up with me you want. I'm going to move through these verses. Touch on them. And um, just show you from the Bible. Alright, let's go to the Lord in prayer. You pray for me this morning. My back hurts and... Um, so all I want to do is go sit down so you pray for me, all right? Heavenly Father, I ask for your, your grace, your help. I pray, dear God, that you would just uh, bless your word today. Lord, I don't know how to preach this. I've never seen hell. I've never been there. Never experienced it. So, Lord, I'm relying upon what your word said to be able to convey to people, Lord. It's theirs to believe it or not. I love people. I don't want anybody to die and go to hell. I love my own people. I love America. I love the people, Lord, that are here in this country. Uh, Lord, Lord, I love people all over the world, but Lord, I'm an American. You made me of this people. And Lord, I love this country. I love the state of Missouri. I love Jefferson County. I love the area that we're in. And uh, Lord, I know there's a lot of people in, in this area that's dying and going to hell. And they need Jesus. They need to be saved. Lord, I don't know how to reach them, but you do. So, Lord, I'm asking you to do what it is you do best. And that is preach your gospel. But, Lord, we have got to be scared to go to hell. We've got to be scared. We've got to be worried and concerned of how our life could end instantly. We have no guarantee, Father. And then we're going to be judged. So, Father, open up our eyes. Help us to see, dear God, the, the reality of who we are as people, what we deserve, and the goodness of Jesus Christ who saves people from hell. Father, bless your word today. I pray in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Who goes to hell? If we leave it up to some people, anybody, there are some people in this world that anybody they don't like goes to hell and they're fine. What we like to do is we like to measure people against ourselves. And we like to look at people and say, well, look at how bad they are. They're really bad because they do this, and I bet they're going to hell, and I'm not because I don't do what they're doing. And Paul cleared that up in the book of Romans. Book of Romans chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 is all about 
how all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everybody sitting in this church and the guy standing here deserves hell as much as anybody else out there. Let's get it. Let's just get that out of the way. We deserve it. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Bible to see who deserves hell. Psalm 917, the wicked. First place you find the word hell in the Bible. Psalm 917, the wicked shall be turned into hell. And all the nations that forget God. Two groups of people mentioned here. Wicked people and people that forget God. So, and, and I'm just, I'm just going to lay it out to you. Don't tell me that you got God on your heart all day long, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and you're God's number one Job. Okay? Don't give me that. There was only one who was that way, and that's Christ. He is the one who uh, does not sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. That's Christ, and that is not you. Okay? So number one. If you have ever done anything wickedly, you are wicked. And you deserve hell. If you've ever forgotten God, you deserve hell. Psalm 55, 15. Let death seize upon them and let them go down quick into hell. For wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. If you have anything wicked in your house. Do you hear me? If you have anything wicked in your house. If you ever ha if you have anything wicked in your car, an M and M CD. I didn't say a bag of M and M's. Music, a little bottle of booze, a little pornographic magazine, cell phone with some guy's name and number on it, or some girl's picture on it. If wickedness is with you and among you and in your dwellings, you deserve hell. You know what God says? Clean your house out. That means get all the wickedness out of your house. Get it out from among you. Get it away from you. Turn it, get, turn it over to God. Let God take it from you. Amen? Get that stuff away from you. That's, you deserve hell for that. Proverbs 10, 29. The way of the Lord is strength to the upright, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. You know what gets me? People will work more at stealing from people than they would work a job. I mean, it takes work to rip people off. Why don't they just go get a job for the government? Do it legally. Workers of iniquity. Anything. Listen. You know what? What is sin according to the Bible? Transgression of the law. You break God's law. You are a worker of iniquity. How many times does it take? One time. But let's get honest. There are no one time sinners. In this place. What we do. We usually do it repeatedly. That makes us workers of iniquity. Destruction shall be to the worker, workers of iniquity. Matthew 5.22. Took me a while to figure this one out. I think I got it. But I say to you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool! Shall be in danger of hellfire. It took me a while. I had to think about this one. Because I'm going. See I had always been told. You don't call people a fool. Because that, that makes you. You're going to go to hell for that. Let me tell you what I think about that. What that verse is saying. When we degrade people. And demean them. We do so in order to lift ourselves up. So you listen to me. Anybody who's got pride in them. About what they do good. Over and against what somebody else does bad, you're worthy of hell. That means me. I can tell you that right now. What I do is think about all the things 
that I don't do. And I forget the things that I do and have done. You know how little children are, right, Edward? You'll always have one at the end of the, the meal prayer say, He had his eyes open during prayer. Right? You ever had that? How do you know? See, that is thou fool. We're Christian fundamentalists. We believe the King James Bible. We believe in holy living. We believe that there is a right way to live and a wrong way to live. And we will fall into judgment of other people against what they have done that we haven't done. Read Romans 1. In fact, here, here's what we're going to do. You turn to Romans 1. I had this in my mind. Wasn't sure where God was going to bring it in. Romans 1. Verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Now, I want you, here's what I want you to be afraid of. When you do something wrong, you feel guilty about it. You should. You should just be tore up inside. Amen? You should, you should just be ashamed to show your face in public what you should be. And I'll say this to you. I'll say this to Bethel Church. If we're... And this goes along with what I've saying before church. We will get full of pride as a church in what God's doing in this place and through this church. We will, we will get full of pride. I will. And what God will do is He'll turn loose of us and let us go wandering our own ways. And every one of us ought to know how dangerous that is. And He'll do that for a reason. He'll do it to cause us to repent. And understand that we're still not better than the people that we're trying to reach. Listen, we're not to reach down to sinners. Reach over. So we're not careful. We'll get full of pride. God will let us, he'll let us go for a while. But let me tell you something. What you ought to be scared to death of. Is that you'll just continue in sin. And then you won't feel guilty about it no more. You know, what, you know what you're on the course for? Reprobate mind. Covey. How you doing, buddy? How many people on probation don't do well on probation? That in your experience as a law enforcement officer. How many people have you had to re-arrest? A bunch. I mean, I watch them. That live PD has got me. I'm just like, I can't sleep at night now. Because first thing they ask them, you on parole, probation? And 99 times out of 100, they're going, yeah. What are you on? Probation. You know what that means? It means the court turned them loose without giving them 5 to 10 years, thinking that they'll get on the right track and not have drugs in their car anymore. And in many, many cases, it doesn't work. So after a while, the court finds that they are reprobate. Which means, under no circumstances can we turn them loose on the streets any longer. They're a danger. Right? Who wants people riding around in the state of Missouri who are high on marijuana all the time? Don't go to Colorado or Nevada. Because I guarantee you they're riding dirty. Amen? Okay? I, I ain't got to the list yet. Reprobate means that God has deemed you unchangeable. You know what that means? He sears your conscience with a hot iron. 
and you are going to hell, no ifs, ands, or buts about it, God can't change you. You won't be changed. You don't want things that are right, and you're never going to want things right. You are a perpetual, wretched, reckless, heathen pervert that belongs in hell, and you're going. And you ought to be thankful every day God has not turned you over yet. Because let me tell you what you're full of. Verse 29. Number one, you are filled with all unrighteousness. All unrighteousness. There's not anything that you are not capable of doing under the right circumstances. Number two, fornication. Our minds and our hearts are full of adultery and fornication. Full of it in this world that we live in. Full of lust. Lusting after women. Lusting after men. Men lusting after men. Women lusting after women. Men lusting after little boys. We're full of fornication. It's on TV everywhere. It's in movies. It's in the books we read. It's in the video games that we play. It is every. It's in advertisements. We have people hopping from bed to bed to bed in this country. We've got apps on our phone that you can just you can just hit a button and find somebody in your neighborhood that wants to sleep with you. We're wicked. We're full of this nonsense. Somebody say amen. You know what, you know what that means? You're, you're ready to go to hell. You're guilty. Don't tell me you're not. Don't tell me how clean you are. Shoot. We were in the Amish communities. You know, they don't watch television, right? They don't listen to Willie Nelson, right? So we were at the county fair, and we, we were getting a, a, some rides from Michaela, and we were watching these Amish girls with their little hats on, their little dresses on, and everything's all covered up. And this old cigarette and sucking drunk 19 year old whoremongering boy going around flirting with these Amish girls and they're going hee, 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 hee. just because you're Amish don't mean you're not a sinner not having a TV doesn't mean that you don't lust after anybody we're full of fornication we're full of wickedness we're full of covetousness what our eyes set on we want we want it we got to have it. Amazon.com. Overrunning Walmart industries. Walmart. Because you get on the internet and look at all these products. You don't even have to leave your house. And look at all these things you want and lust after. And just buy them. They'd be at your door in two days. And it's no big deal. We're full of covetousness. TV advertisements. Radio spots. Designed to draw us to covetousness. To lust after things. Then we're full of maliciousness. Don't tell me you didn't pull out in front of that guy on purpose. Full of envy. Full of murder. You didn't kill him, but you thought about it. By the way, I'll say churches are full of murderers. That church people that have murdered people cover up their sins so they didn't get caught. Debate. Arguing about everything. Arguing with, hey... Kids, arguing with mom and dad about every, every time they say something, you've got to argue with them. Every time a preacher preaches, you've got to argue something about what he's preaching. Debate, deceit. That's, what you're, that's what's in your heart. Your heart's full of deceit. Malignity. That means that whatever sins you do, you seem to kind of have a way of Spreading them around to people around you. You're malignant. Whisperers. I haven't been mean in a long time. But I'm fixing to be mean. Raise your hand if you will be honest enough to admit that you have gossiped about somebody in the last month. I believe it, Liam. (laughs) 
tattletale, right? Right? You know what? Hey, you whisperers, you know why you whispered? You know why you, you know why you uh, gossiped about somebody? Because you found out that they did something, and you went and told somebody else, and now you don't like them because they did something, right? You're going to hell. You're going to be in hell next to the person that you gossiped about. Whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful. You do things out of spite. Whatever your whatever your wife says, you're just going to get her back out of spite. Doesn't matter if she's right or not. You're just going to get her back. Whatever your husband says or does, you're just going to get him back. Kids are the same way. Proud. Boasters. Inventors of evil things. Young people. Disobedient to parents. Young people, do you know why the Bible commands, not suggests, commands that your parents take a rod, a rod, mind you, not their hand, a rod, and put stripes and welts on your backside? Do you know why? you know why the Bible commands them to do that? To save you from going to hell. Because you are disobedient to your parents. And you go to hell for that. You learn to be disobedient to your parents. Then you're going to be disobedient in life as an adult. Without understanding. Covenant breakers. Oh I promise. I promise. I'll never do this again. Liar. You're a liar. Covenant breaker. Without natural affection. Implacable means you can't be moved. You're bullheaded. Stubborn. Un, hey, here we go. Unmerciful. I ain't forgiving them. I'll never forgive them. Go to hell then. Our Savior who died on the cross for us, who loves us more than anybody ever loved us, told us, if we don't forgive those who trespass against us, we will not have our trespasses forgiven. Now, who goes to hell? Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death not only do the same but have pleasure in them that do them. That's who goes to hell. Matthew 23, 15. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourself. You know what that verse says in this context? Religious people go to hell. Religious, listen. They do funerals in churches for people who go to hell all week long. All, over, all around the world, religious people die and go to hell. I have grown up and seen in this church people that when they died, I'm pretty sure they died and went to hell. And they went to this church. And there's people that I know, have known in the past from this church that I am fearful that they will die and go to hell. And I was talking to somebody in this church today, this morning before church, and we were talking about one of those people. And we both agreed we do not want to see them go to hell. Don't want them to go. A denial of hell 
does not make it go away. See, in Isaiah 28, 14, Israel made a covenant with death and with hell. You know what that is in modern terms? Me and God got our own thing going. I always fish and hunt on Sunday, and God knows me. I run around. I drink. Snort a little every now and then. Got me a couple women I go see on the side. But I work hard. And me and God got an agreement. God knows me. I'm a good person. I'll go to heaven when I die. You're in denial. You have made a covenant that God did not agree to. Because God only makes one contract with mankind. One covenant. And that is through the death of His only begotten Son. That He washes away our sins and cleans our life up. That's God's covenant with us. Your covenant is with hell, hoping that hell won't get you. And in Isaiah 28, 18, he said, Your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. You think you're not going? You think, well, hell's not, hell's not for me. Hell's for the really bad people. Or, I don't believe in hell. Or, hell is this, or hell is that. Whatever. You can deny it all you want to, and you'll be burning in it. For eternity. Jesus said the best thing you can have going for you is a fear of hell. Matthew 10, 28. Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy soul and body in hell. Luke 12, 5. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. No fear what man can do to you. Man can kill you, but he can't send you to hell. God can. Fear him. Proverbs 23. Hey, young people. Open your Bible up. Proverbs 23. Young people. Open your Bible up. Proverbs 23. If you don't have a Bible, reach up in that pew and grab one of them Bibles. Proverbs 23, 13. I want you to look at this verse. I'm going to pray. That after the service, that the parents take all their children home and just beat the living daylights out of them. And when they say, what is that for? Say, you're not going to hell. Not on my watch. <laughs> what did you do anything? Oh, yes, you did. You just didn't get caught in it. God told me. <laughs> Listen, that's not abuse. Lisa pulled something up on Facebook the other day. They, Listen, they will not let this issue go. The, the new psychologists have determined, the study, they spent $14.5 billion of government money, tax money, and the study they did was, was that um, um, spanking leads to mental disease. Boy, I wish I had that $12.5 billion to open up some more radio stations, amen. Proverbs 23, 13. Withhold not correction from the child. For if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Did you hear that, kids? My mom whooped me so hard one time. I did. I thought I was going to die. And I thought, I'm going to call. I'm going to turn her in. She abused me. Do what? Yeah, she would. Have. She's, you going to turn me in? Here, call him. Call him. Listen, my mom was never sorry for whipping me. Thank God. Thou beatest him with a rod, he shall not die. Thou shalt beat him with a rod and shalt deliver his soul from hell. Why? How does that work? You are teaching these children that for wrong actions there is severe pain. You are teaching them and instructing them on the doctrine of hell fire. Because we say, I'm going to burn your bottom. And you are teaching them the biblical doctrine of hell fire. You teach them that for wrong actions. I'm going 
going to say this. Yelling is not discipline. That's for everybody. Yelling is not discipline. Now I know sometimes it takes a strong voice to get their attention. But the strong voice does not correct the foolishness that's in their heart. The rod does. And if you listen, and if you don't, as mom and dad, if you don't, if you're not buying this, then if I were you, I'd get along with God and search it out in the Word and ask God who's right and wrong. Because the doctrine is if God can't whip you, you're going to hell. That's the doc. That's what God says. That's what His Word says. Can't apologize for it. And we live in a time right now where most parents do not discipline their children, which causes us to not want to let our kids around them. It's scary. So, who in here does not want to go to hell? Amen. Who in here? Has somebody that you know that's going to hell. You know it. You don't have to raise your hand, but you know it. You shouldn't want them to go. And you shouldn't just stand by and let them go. And I'm not saying... That you got to come up with the words and you got to make it a point to get after them every day until they. Some people may not get saved. That's, we'll leave that up to God. But how dare you thank God for your salvation and forget lost people? How dare you? Amen? God forgave you, you worthless, nasty pig. See, I love you. I call you a worthless, nasty pig. I love you. I'm not abusing you. I'm telling you who you are. Amen? And I'm the hog guard. It's my job to keep the swine where they need to be. Amen? I'm just like you. Worthless, no good, rotten, hell deserving. And God saved me for whatever reason. I had no idea. But there's people that you know that are going to die and go to hell. The least that you can do is pray for them. How hard is that? Even if you hate them. Even if you're mad at them. See, I've had to do that. God's made me do that. Be mad at somebody and pray that God would bless them enough to save them. Oh, I hated doing that. It's like sitting with my arm around my sister when we were fighting. Oh, I hated that. But God made me do it because it's right. So, what do y'all want to do? Y'all want to pray there? You want to pray here? What do y'all want to do? We're going to pray for lost people, right? So they don't go to hell? Is everybody clear on this now? Who goes to hell? Okay. There's other places. You can read uh, Galatians Five, there's a list of the works of the flesh. Just go through and check off the things that you're guilty of. And if you got one of them, you're going to hell without the grace of God. Okay? So I'm going to leave it up to you. If you want to pray there, it's fine. You want to come in here and pray. And I mean pray for people that are lost. Pray for people that you're mad at. Pray for people that you hate. Okay? That you do not want them to go to hell. All right? You folks online, you, you pray with us, okay?